Mamadou is um, probably one of the world's most important gold entrepreneurs uh, with a, a banking asset management background. Um, and you, you've created a very important company, Ubuntu Capital Tribe. And uh, so insightful, Mamadou. Really, if you could share, I know you're going to be talking later in the conference, but share your worldview because I think it's an extremely important one. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so my, my, uh, my perspective as the world is, uh, is going now, uh, you know, we're we kind of heading back to a form of uh, bipolarization, if I may. But in a bipolarization that is a bit, uh, that is quite different from what we've heard or seen from the Cold War. It's more structured, something around the global south slash east versus the West as, as an entity today. Um, and uh, one key element of that, um, of course, is the BRICS. I mean, you might be aware there's like 19 countries worldwide who have applied uh, to join the BRICS, including Mexico, right? Saudi Arabia and so on, and many African countries. And all, of, all around that has a very key impact on what you call a growing trend now, which is uh, the de-dollarization of the global economy, which is a major, major angle point, um, you know, in, um, in international relations, but more importantly, interna international trade. Um, so as you, as you experiment that, and you have more and more countries using the renminbi, et, et cetera, you also see the BRICS who want to come with their own currency. And, um, and uh, that currency, actually, the, the, the key features of it is uh, actually resource-backed. That would be lithium and, and several other mineral resources. So what you're seeing is a kind of combination of a geopolitical <coughs> shift combined with a monetary shift, right? So we're moving from, a, I would say, paper-based economy uh, um, to a resource-based economy, right? And uh, you know, and it used to be resource-backed at the time until Nixon in '71, when the dollar was backed by gold. So, and the the main reason of acceleration of this uh, phenomenon from a monetary point of view is, uh, I think I think COVID has been a major accelerator and an eye opener for a lot of countries in the world. I mean, you might be aware that over the past. I mean, from the COVID era, I think uh, more money has been printed than in the whole century, right? Uh, and the inflation that we're experimenting now, at least the numbers that are shared, let's say they're highly <coughs> understated, right? Um, now, as you, as you face that, then you have a, a global awareness of a weak monetary system. Um, the fear also of the weaponization of the dollar uh, which gets a lot of other countries being very skeptical. And at the same time, uh, an inflation that is being curved by uh, hikes in interest rates that therefore slows down the economy to a certain extent, but also has led to the rise of gold. Over the past six months alone, gold has gained 30% over the dollar, right? So it's, going, it's coming back as a safe haven for investors and, um, um, and, and most uh, people in trade who are looking at an at a edge against uh, those, those recurring crises. In, on the backdrop of that, you have the rise and, and anticipation of a sh global monetary shift by the introduction of the central bank digital currencies. Mm -hmm. Right, so I mean, uh, you might be aware or may not, but uh, on June uh, 2021, uh, the top 13 banks in the world uh, gathered basically to start working on, not start because they had been working on it for a long time, on what you call the quantum financial system. And the quantum financial system is a combination of blockchain and actually um, blockchain AI and quantum computing. Right. So it's uh, the, the thing is that people will be announced but when it's ready, but it's actually ready already. It's just being tested. And there is a preparation of the global population into that. And you might, have, might be aware, I think, 
Uh, Greece is probably the, ex the exception because I still paid the cab in cash, right? I don't know for how long it's going to last, but te <laughs> technically, um, um, you, in Europe, uh, you won't do it, be able to do any transaction in cash below $1,000 by the end of this year, and probably next year it won't be below $300. So moving into digitization of payment in order to prepare people for a digital currency that will be introduced, the digital euro, the digital dollar, uh, Africa is actually leading in that space, right? So um, I don't know if it's the leading as guinea pigs or leading as as uh, as innovation. At least from a central bank point of view, that's another that's another conversation. But Nigeria has introduced the the e naira. Ghana is introducing the ECD. Uh, Kenya coming up with the e shillings. And uh, what 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 is very interesting in the introduction of those digital currencies is that. As much as Bitcoin and all those digital assets has been, have been uh, uh, damaged in terms of credibility, the reality is that in the background, actually, the establishment is putting their own structure. So it's no longer the question whether we're moving into digital currency. There is one thing what you hear in media, and there is another thing what is happening in the background. The reason why you hear what you hear in media is because if it gets adopted too fast by you, then <laughs> there won't be any interest in the actual legacy digital, I'll already call it the legacy digital currency, but, uh, but that's going to be mainstream. So there was this thing, well, okay, technology is moving much faster, let's slow it down, right? So, you know, you have that thing from MI6, discredit or destroy, right? So it couldn't <laughs> be destroyed, right? So it's being discredited. But the reality is that that's the way to go and everybody knows it. Okay, so as this evolves, our real challenge is, how do we prepare people to effectively not be, not be pushed in a situation where, uh, like India, for instance, where they've removed the $500 rupee from the, uh, the system, now soon the $2,000 rupee. Nigeria, they removed all the old notes. So you deflate, and your money actually is now worth nothing because you can't use it. So basically, what we're looking at, it's a perfect storm Right from a monetary, economic, and conflict point of view, for which we believe gold is the way to go.